Welcome! In this video, we're going to walk through Strong Password Checker, which has been the problem with the lowest acceptance rate on LeetCode for at least the last seven years. A lot of solutions to this problem have lots of conditional logic addressing one-off cases and are just kind of hard to read, even if they're verbose in comments. Today, I want to demonstrate that with proper planning ahead of time, we can actually write a relatively simple algorithm that does not require any special cases and is also fairly easy to read. So first of all, we have some definitions. A strong password is between 6 and 20 characters long, has at least one lowercase, uppercase, and digit, and does not contain three characters in a row. We can perform insertions, replacements, and deletions, and we need to return the minimum number of edits to a string to turn it into a strong password. At first glance, this seems pretty similar to edit distance given the wording of the problem. In edit distance, we also can perform inserts, deletes, and replacements to transform one word into another, but there are some key differences, the main one being that our edits have to be selective. In the regular minimum edit distance problem, every edit we take brings us closer to the answer, but in this problem, it's possible that our edits take us further from the answer if we're not careful. For example, say we delete a character because the password is too long. Well, if we're not careful, that one character we delete might be the only uppercase letter in the password, and then we'd have to make additional changes to get a strong password. So we can't just plug in our solution to the minimum edit distance problem and make small adjustments. We need an entirely new algorithm. Let's jump into it. The first key point we should consider, if you have length x, where x is greater than 20 characters, you have to delete at least x minus 20 characters. Let's think about it. If you have a character that repeats three times, you can delete one of the characters, insert a character in between to separate them, or you can replace one of the triplets. Of course, inserting and replacing, like we just said, don't do anything to decrease the number of characters we have to delete. We can maybe delete one of the repeating characters, but my point still stands. There is no way we can circumvent the requirement that we need a deletion, regardless of the type of edit we choose to address triplet characters. So let's write that down. If the length of the string is greater than 20, then our result will always have at least length of s minus 20, and nothing we do can reduce this amount. One thing to consider is that unlike deletions, insertions can help alleviate all the other problems. An insertion can add a missing type of character, and it can also be used to break apart repeating substrings, whereas deletions can only be used for the latter case. So, Insertions, replacements, and triplet breaking have a different kind of relationship compared to deletions. We need to consider three example cases to make this clear. In case one, we're missing one type of character, we have two triplet substrings, and we need three inserts. So as we said earlier, the number of inserts is the absolute minimum we need, so let's tentatively set our total to three. What is the minimum number of additional changes we need to address the remaining problems? Think about it and pause the video. I'll reveal the answer in 3, 2, 1. The answer is we need zero additional changes. Why? For the missing type of character, one of our insertions can be used to insert a new character that has the missing type and simultaneously break up one of the triplet substrings. For the remaining triplet substring, you can insert a different character in between each of those triplets to break them up. And then finally, the last insertion can be anywhere in the string. So the answer in this case is three total changes to address this. In case two, we have three missing types of characters, we have two triplet substrings, and we need one insert. We can use our one insertion to break up a triplet substring and include one of the missing types. For example, by inserting A between these three pound symbols. Then we'd have one triplet substring left and two missing types of characters. How many additional changes do we need to address this? Think about it and pause the video. I'll reveal the answer in three, two, one. In this case, we could just replace two of the elements of the remaining triplet as two new types of characters. So we change dollar, dollar, dollar to A1 dollar. So our grand total would still be three changes. And finally, in case three, let's say we have two missing types of characters, three triplet substrings, and we need one insert. Once again, let's use our one insertion to insert a new character type and break up one of the triplets at the same time. 
So now we have one missing character and we have two triplet substrings. Our next edit can still address both issues at the same time by replacing one of the characters and one of the triplets with the missing type. So again, that's like dollar 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 to dollar one dollar. And finally, we have one triplet substring and we can edit that however we like by using an insertion or a replacement. So our grand total here is once again three. When thinking about insertions, missing types of characters and triplet substrings, the number of edits required to address these is always the maximum of the three types, regardless of which type of problem has the most issues or the least issues. So let's record that. Our result must additionally include the maximum edits required among insertions, missing types, and triplet breaking. Before we jump into coding, let's address one tricky part about this. Let's look at how many replacements you need to correct repeating substrings of different lengths. So, for example, a length 2 substring requires 0 edits. A length 3 substring will require 1 replacement. A length 4 substring will, require, also, will also require 1 replacement. And so on. So, let's look at our results. A length 3 substring requires 1 extra edit than a length 2 substring. A length 6 substring requires one more edit than a length 5 substring. So if our password is longer than 20 characters, and we have to delete characters from repeating substrings, we might as well prioritize deleting the ones whose length mod 3 is equal to 0, because that will reduce the number of edits we need to replace characters within repeating substrings later. If there are no substrings with length mod 3 equals to 0, then we prioritize those with length mod 3 equals to 1, because one deletion would bring that substring to length mod 3 equals to 0. Let's keep that in mind as we jump into the code. The first thing we're going to do here is import the string module so we can easily access the alphabet. We'll define a lowercase set with some built-in lowercase values, and we'll define an uppercase set with some built-in uppercase values. We'll also create a digit set to hold digits 0 through 9. Next, let's calculate how many de deletions we need. That's simply going to be 0 if our length is less than 20, and length of the string minus 20 if the length is greater than 20. Now, let's figure out how many edits we need due to missing types. The problem states that we need at least one uppercase, one lowercase, and one digit. So let's see how many categories we're missing by checking against the character sets we created in lines 5 through 7. The syntax here in line 14 might look a little funny to you. In case you're not familiar, in Python, you can actually do arithmetic with booleans where false is 0 and true is 1. So by adding these booleans, we're getting the number of types of characters that we're missing from the password, and therefore the number of edits we need to address those missing types. Now for the hard part. We need to do some work related to the substrings that have at least three repeating characters. Let's first call and then define a new method, count substring lengths. As the name suggests, it counts the lengths of each substring in the password. We don't really care about the content of each substring. We just care about the length of repeating characters in that substring. So for example, AAABBC will result in 321 because there are three A's, two B's, and one C. We'll iterate through our string, and if the current character is equal to the last one we saw, we increment the current substring length. Otherwise, we restart the count of the new substring at one. Now before I move on, Take a moment to reflect. Why is it necessary for me to get the number of repeating characters in each substring? How does it relate to our planning discussion from earlier? Think about it and pause the video. I'll reveal the answer in three, two, one. The answer is that in our discussion earlier, we talked about prioritizing certain length substrings when we're deleting. Recall, we said that we wanted to prioritize substrings with lengths modulo three equal to zero. So we'll use this list to keep track of the substring lengths and prioritize which substrings we'll delete from. Next, we'll call and define a new method called break substrings with deletions. As the name suggests, this is the method we'll use to determine which repeating substrings we delete from using our allot allotted deletions defined in line nine. This next line might be the most complicated line in the entire program. Let me explain what's going on here. So for example, if we have a list containing elements 8, 7, 6, and we iterate over enumerate on this list, we would end up with 0, 8, 1, 7, and 2, 6, because 8 is the 0th index, 
7 is the first index, and 6 is the second index. The lambda I'm providing as a second argument to this min function is a comparator function. We're telling min to use this lambda function to determine the value of each of our enumerate tuples. Since we want this min function to prioritize tuples associated with substrings whose length mod 3 is closer to 0, we'll say that the value of each tuple is the second element modulo 3, and all other substrings with length less than 3 will have value infinity to guarantee that the min function never prioritizes these substring lengths over those of length greater than or equal to 3. So since enumerate returns a bunch of tuples, then the min of a bunch of tuples will also be a tuple. So now that we have the best substring length to delete from, let's extract that index from that tuple, which will be the element at index 0. And then we'll use one of our deletions to delete one character from that repeating substring, therefore decrementing the count at best index to delete. Finally, let's repeat this operation until num deletions goes to 0. OK, so now that we've collected the substring lens and we've deleted as many repeating characters in those substrings as we could, let's look at how many additional edits we need to get rid of the remaining repeating substrings. We can either insert between substrings or we can do a replacement. Which operation should we use? Think about it and pause the video. I'll reveal the answer in 3, 2, 1. The answer is that we should use replacements. If we use insertions, we run the risk of increasing the length of our password beyond 20 characters. So if we're using replacements to break these repeating substrings, then we'll need to replace one character every three repeats we see. So let's take the sum of all the remaining lengths, 4 divided by 3. OK, that was the hardest part. Now let's get the number of insertions, which is just 6 minus length of s if length of s is less than 6, and 0 if it's greater than or equal to 6. And then now, we just returned a formula we derived earlier, num deletions plus the max of num missing types, number of substring breaks, and number of insertions. Let's click run to sanity check. Oops, we made a typo. I missed the C in ASCII. Let's click run again. Ah, the program isn't detecting digits properly. That's because the set of digits we're using should be a set of string digits not numerical digits so that we perform a membership check correctly. Now let's run again. Ah, so the comparator function in min needs the prefix key equals. So let's add that back in. And now if we submit our answer, yep, we beat 97% of users in Python. And that's how you do the hardest problem on LeetCode in just 40 lines of code. I'll see you in the next video.